All right, should be able to see me in there. Red, orange, and yellow guy. Yep. Beard yeah. should be somewhat of a blue and black. Yes. Um, some people call me nearly headless Nick. If you guys get the Harry Potter reference, good on you. <laughs> yeah. um, good, because I use a lot of them. <laughs> nearly headless. Um, but we're going to be looking for the blue and black. There's always going to be blue and black in here. Um, I want to say it's a chilly night for us because I just complained about the heat. Um, but the, the windshields, w uh, windows, metal can on the ground, the sign that caught some wind, they're all going to be like blue and black. Um, I'm looking for those blue and black areas to move or to take shape. When I say take shape, I want a head, shoulders, moving arms and legs. That's what we've caught with this guy in the past. That's what we'll capture with it hopefully one day again. Um, so I love to give you stats about the equipment. Like I said, I capture about four to five pieces on this guy per year that I would put my stamp of approval on. I probably have, I don't even know how many hours in the field per year. Um, I do about, we'll just say I do about 200 investigations a year. Um, that includes the tours plus my own. Um, so if that gives you a, an ample amount of stats, like I'm not a TV show host, I'm not a YouTuber. Um, but do I have dozens of others? I do that are like questionable. Let me explain. <laughs> there is a blue dot bouncing around this screen right now. It is showing you the coldest spot in the frame at that particular moment. I'm looking for 15 plus degree temperature drops out of that. Um, for any kind of cold anomalies. Um, so uh, I think I wrote down that it was like 58 degrees out here. I mean, no, maybe it was higher than that. It was 64. Um, so we're gonna use, we'll just say 50 degrees as a, as a marker. Anything below that is what I'm looking for, but I also don't want that to stand still either. If it stands still, it's probably glass, can on the ground. I want it to move across the screen in that 50 degree range. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect, well, I love this. You guys are just like all soaking this in. It's awesome. Um, you wouldn't believe how many times I have to like re-explain how a thermal imaging camera works. Um, so with this one, How far should we be walking? Just stay within the confines of the walls. So okay. everybody's going to just kind of spread out. And if Paul, if you see anybody coming, just hold it like it's a normal cell phone. <laughs> we don't want to make anybody feel weird. Oh. <laughs> yeah, the camera is super cool to watch. And I upload those up to YouTube so I can watch them on a bigger screen. Um, we're okay because we have somebody's body heat in there. So it's going to fluctuate based on what's inside the frame. Um, so it's actually perfect. I usually tell people to try to keep a, a live person in the frame so that way we could see a cold reference and much easier to see. Um, so yeah, you got it. Nice and easy to use. It was actually acting up a little bit the past couple of investigations. Mm -hmm. My whole heart.
nothing unique? I'm not seeing anything. Nope. Remember, I only see about four or five pieces per year that I would say that's okay. definitely paranormal. Okay. But if we're not recording, we won't get it. That's the beauty of it. So I just keep recording until yep. you tell me to recording. stop? Yep. I'm going to give these ladies a few more minutes to go through it because we're getting the gist of it. Okay. And then I'll wrap it up. Get lucky. I wonder if the uh, results get affected as one is skeptical. <laughs> Jennifer Hudson. <laughs> but you don't know if the last name is exactly also Hudson. Hudson. Yeah. One thousand. Talking to her. Oh, is this so many women? Forty niners. Fifty percent is a woman in the video as well. The number three or four is what they got in the video. And then dies in front. And one other one, sorry, made easy. There. Come and see. Your face. Spirit. Struggling in this area. Is it definitely about the industry here? Mm -hmm. Like the struggling industry. Uh, out of all of the things that you guys just told me, the one thing that stands up to me is any kind of I also just got one. Most people are archer blind. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> This is me excited, by the way. About the word doctor. Um, so, welcome to Philadelphia. He's coming after your cash. When he moves down here to Charleston, the police said he's not. On his way into town, he had a coachman. The coachman set him up to be robbed and killed. It wasn't a very good start to his stay here in Charleston, but somebody was walking by. By the way, being set up that way by a coachman is like having a really bad Uber driver in today's world. <laughs> um, yeah, when I have teenagers, I have to explain that shit because they don't know what the hell a coachman is. <laughs> um, but, sorry. <laughs> I know you guys aren't teenagers, but I, I still like to make a joke for this one. Anyway, um, I feel justified, as you can see. Um, can you tell, like, my teenagers are grown and I can actually still say that kind of stuff? <laughs> it's so funny. Um, but moving on. There was a person walking by and, like, knew it was about to happen to the newcomer. Um, and the person walking by, his name was Ralph Isaacs. 
Did his initials sound familiar to anything else I've said since we've been here? Did he say Rhode Island? I did say Rhode Island. Good okay. job. Um, <laughs> see, there's a test at the end of these guys. <laughs> So, um, we were getting the letters R.I. from regular Spearbox of my last job. Um, he would follow us around. Um, so I was like, I might as well just keep him here because we would always be near a place of raised emotion for him. The old last stop that I was taking people to just a few weeks ago before he got kicked out of there um, was near his house where he lived at 59 Church Street. It was right around the corner. So he would show up there all the time. He would show up at the next location by the cemetery. Uh, anyway, if you're going to try and listen for the whistles, I'm sure you just heard a bunch of whistles from that group because they just heard this story. So they all go to the next ghost door. That's my understanding. Uh, but if you guys walk through here on your own and use your voice recorder from your phone trying to look for those whistles, just remember every local knows the damn story. And anybody walking up and down Cumberland or Queen Street, we all throw a whistle down this alley. Mm -hmm. It's just something we do. I can't even drive past this alley without whistling. My wife makes fun of me. We were just down here a few days ago. Just I, She hasn't been down here, so I brought her down. I drove to up Cumberland Street and I whistled. And started cracking up laughing. She's like, you can't help yourself, can you? I'm like, nope. <laughs> you just can't do it. Um, there's a there's like people over that way if you guys like listening for like where the noise is coming from. Okay. Um, so anyway, so why are we here trying to talk about ghost stories with the whistles? Why are we in Dooler's Alley talking about a happy doctor? Let's get into that. Dr. Ladd and Ralph go see plays together, but they can't sit next to each other because the doctor makes more money. That's the hierarchy of Charleston. He gets better seats. So they go see Richard the Third one night, and they're walking home, discussing the new actress they just saw. Doc thought she was great. Ralph didn't. They start arguing, and then Ralph is insulting the doctor's fiance back home in Rhode Island, and it got really ugly between the two of them, and they go their separate ways. The next day, Ralph goes to see his friends at the newspaper and places an ad in the paper telling the whole city of Charleston what he thinks of the doctor. Kind of a, you're a disgrace to society kind of thing. So Doc saw the ad and rebuttaled with, let's go to Jeweler's Alley. We're going to settle this. Keep in mind, this argument started over an actress. Pretty dumb shit happened in the 1700s. So I'll just point that out. That's true. Yeah. Two gems come down here, back to back. They took their ten paces away from each other and returned. Doc pointed his gun in the air and shot his one shot. He didn't want to kill his friend. He just needed the courage to show up. That's what often happened at a duel. So Ralph has his one bullet, and he puts it in the kneecap on the doc. Doc didn't die, but he fell to the ground in shame. Obviously, Ralph didn't want to kill his friends either, but he proved his point. He's still mad. Doc's friends picked him up, took him home to 59 Church Street. He died 10 days later, November 2nd of 1786, after refusing medical treatment. Uh, two things about that statement. It is 1786. Gunshot wounds are a lot different back then than what we know of them now. And he is a doctor. He probably thought he had lead poisoning and tried to bleed it out himself, but he failed. So, again, every ghost story tells their, their guests to listen for the whistles. We're doing it in a much, I usually, like, we don't really bring this thing out over here. Uh, if we were going to capture a whistle, it would probably be on Dad's camera or my voice recorder. But now we're adding this to the mix. So the hope here is that, and I will tell you that the one disembodied whistle that I've actually caught from this location has come from that recorder. Um, again, I probably bring that thing out over here maybe once a month, maybe a quarter. It just depends. It just depends on the size of the group and how things are going um, and how quiet it is. Because if it's windy, i got to put a windscreen on it and kind of you know, take it down a little bit. Um, so let's talk about how I got kicked out of this place because that's the fun part of the story while we're still listening in on that. And you guys can feel free to pass that around if you want to. It's completely up to you now that all the other stores are around. Um, do you got any words going on before I yeah. say last couple are spy picked. So the, does the anytime, anywhere thing kind of make sense to you guys now, why that stood out to me? Um, and then obviously the word doctor. Um, so going further back in history, so we're going to go before Jeweler's Alley. This place actually had a wall up about halfway between where we're standing and Cumberland Street. It was up this way because this is where they kept the livestock for the city of Charleston. It was called Cow Alley before Jeweler's Alley. Um, so cows, goats, and chickens were down here. So why am I telling you this? They basically started by Queen Street and started building what we now see over the hundreds of years that it took to build this, this alley. Um, which means those bricks down at the other end are older than the ones we're standing on. Those are sun-dried bricks from slave labor. There's a full handprint from the slave child down there. Some fingerprints wiped and others. I used to take my groups down there for a history lesson. There's nothing paranormal about that brick. The kid's not there staring at that brick in the afterlife. I mean, we already talked about this with headstones. So, November 26th, and I think that's exactly today's date, is it not? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. November 26th of 2020, I took my group down there. Gave them a history lesson about that brick means we're trying to move on. But they all decided to stop and wait and huddle around the damn brick waiting for something to happen. I'm trying to shoo them along because I know we're standing outside the dining room window of the beautiful mansion at the end of the alley. I'm trying to be respectful. Well, I didn't realize we were out of bounds for tours. I was new to this. 
the new owner of that mansion came out screaming his head off. My daughter was on the tour that night, my youngest. She was about 14, and she thought it was hysterical that her father was getting yelled at right in front of her. She was all about it, guys. Oh. She cracked up laughing. We moved on. The next day was Thanksgiving that year. So I don't tour on holidays because I did work in upper management for Walmart before I started doing this. You guys fight over towels on Thanksgiving and scarred me for life. I don't work on holidays anymore. Now, the next day after that was the 28th of November. And I called my partner that I had at the time and I told him what happened. And he's already laughing because he already got the complaint and told me, you're not allowed to go down that far, dude. You got to reroute the group. And he hung up the damn phone. So now I'm like, all right, now what? So I told my group that night, I'm sold out again. Tickets much cheaper back then. And it was just Black Friday. I'm sold out. I was like, I don't believe in the next story, guys. I've never had anything happen over there, and I'm into vampires, not pirates. So normally I would tell you a pirate story next, but I've been kicked out of there too. Um, and we've all been kicked out of that one. Uh, but anyway, so basically, if I tell you we're going to be talking about pirates in Charleston, who's the first pirate you think of? Martin. Blackbeard. Blackbeard, right. Oh, Blackbeard, okay. Who did you say, Paul? Yeah. Martin. Captain Morgan. Oh, Morgan. <laughs> I doubt that's Morgan. I'm just happy to see two statues uh, today. Hmm. Actually, I wouldn't know. Captain Morgan. Um, I just got surfed again. So, um, but yeah, Blackbeard is the correct answer to that. And normally, I would not tell you who we're investigating. So somebody with a spirit box, before we left this space, uh, they heard the name Anne. You would normally think we're going to be discussing Blackbeard. No. Anne Bonnie, the famous female pirate. And I was like, oh, maybe we'll get something. I took him around the corner. I told him what I didn't know about pirates in Charleston. It wasn't much. Um, and somebody else heard the number 300 coming out of a different spirit box. I didn't know what it meant. I wrote it down. Uh, we were there November 28th, 2020. And Bonnie's trial for piracy was November 28th of 1720. That's the exact 300th anniversary of her pirate, you know, trial. So normally I get like the oohs and ahs. And I'm, I was actually quite pissed off that day. Let me explain why. I told you all the degrees I have in writing. Whenever I'm researching anything, guys, I need facts and data. Pirate stories come from pirate lore. Pirate lore was written a hundred years after the days of Blackbeard and Anne Bonny. So that's a problem. Anytime somebody thought they heard a piratey term, I had to read five textbooks to be able to try to figure out how validated it actually could be. So I had this great story for Anne Bonny, and now we can't go over there anymore because they're rezoning the city for where we are and aren't allowed to be. Um, so what's going to happen from here is we're going to go up and around the corner. Um, so I'm going to like actually shut that thing down. So if anybody else wants to give it a quick listen, let me know. Um, I think Reagan and Paul, you were the last two if you wanted to listen in on it. Uh, 